saw, you see here, two years ago, this was just compost. It was just scraps I, I actually put in there. So this whole area, almost two and a half feet, was stuff I took out of the garden two years ago and threw it there. Now I'm planting it. And tell me about this garlic. That garlic is huge. This, this is another test I've done. Because I used to plant garlic in the spring, right? And I used to plant not so much. I, I didn't really know about the fall. So, <coughs> last couple of years, I've been putting in the fall. And this is my fall garlic right here. I plant it in October. It starts to grow. It gets a root system started. And then the winter comes, and it kind of dies back. But when the spring comes, boom. Boom. Mm. It come. So, you come around here. This is my spring garlic. I planted this in the spring. Now, it, it is taking off, as you see here. It's starting. It's starting to take off. That's an onion there. That's a, a freeloader. <laughs> and this one over here is a freeloader, too. <laughs> You see how he's starting to, he, he runs nice uh, organized rows, but he's starting to kind of, uh, you know, intermix them a little more. Well, because I, uh, I have the have garlic the here. I got garlic there. And then these rows, these are onions. They're all onions. This is a freeload onion. That's from last year. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I just figured I would leave it. And in and, and these pots, I'm really having trouble with beans this year. Last year I had no trouble with beans. But there's a bug eating them. So I'm going to have to replant again. That will be the second time. But if, if you look close, there's a bug eating them. There's a bug eating it. It's trying, but the bug's eating it. So I'm going to have to replant again. Maybe I can get some kind of a, a non-toxic uh, powder that maybe will deterrent the bug. Yeah, so there's always, uh, it looks like it could be... Um... Some kind of a beetle, eh? Yeah, uh, June beetles, or yeah, I forget, I'm not sure I forget what, what they're called. Is. But uh, diatomaceous earth can work for that. It's basically right. crust up she seashells from the ocean. And I'm going to get something. It works like jagged knives, and it'll kill um, insects. It will kill other insects, too, and it doesn't work when it's wet. So if it rains, you know, the sharp edges get I kind of so. removed. Yeah. But uh, it can work to help save some bugs. Just have to be careful, especially around pollination season, if you do diatomaceous earth, because it will actually kill bees as well. Yeah. And you don't want that. We're going to try something. I, I planted something in here. Um, bees. But they're struggling too. The bugs are eating them. Something's been digging in there. What are you going to do, right? So then I got the lettuce. We've been eating lettuce now for probably a week and a half. So, so the lettuce is turning out very good. I planted these four years ago. These are what you call sour sour cherry bushes. And they are packed with cherries. If you look in tight, they're packed. There's cherries everywhere on these. And this, this bush, when I first got it, I thought it was going to die. It struggled, struggled, struggled. I mound up all the chips. Tried that again. Bush come back. Beautiful. That one never gave me no problems at all. That just took off. That just loved it where it is. It looks so, pretty happy right now. It's it's in my garden. It's shading. I don't want to move it now. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to deal with it. I don't want to move it. So then I planted beans again. But they're struggling. The beans are not doing good. I don't know why. Uh... I planted more beans there. That's the second plant. They're, they're, they're coming up. They're not doing too bad. These are my my, uh, my peppers. Peppers are doing good. There was a bug eating them, if you notice here. There is a bug eating it. Eating something in there. But they're starting to come back. And it looks like the same damage. Yeah. Yeah. She's coming, though. Well, and the thing is, is when you want to eat food that's not sprayed with chemicals, one of the things is that some of your plants are going to get nibbled by, yeah, by bugs. But the beans, they're actually coming up. Like, they're actually starting. So maybe they're going to be okay. I'm not sure. And and I I plant another row there because we really like beans, eh? And then I I 
planted a second row of lettuce. Which it struggled a bit, but it's it's actually coming up. And this, this is potato. It's a freeloader. It's just come up on its own. You'll never get every potato. No, so I don't know if I'm going to leave that or take it out. I'm not sure. There's another potato there. And then I got over here, which probably done pretty good. These are black beans. But see, black beans, something, something ate it. Something ate it. It come up nice here. This is black bean, something is eating it. But this one, this one made it. It made it. Now, tomatoes. So I planted three tomatoes. I want to do a test. The first tomato, I dug the hole, put an egg in, cracked the egg, put the tomato plant on top, covered it up. The second one, I put an egg, I put fertilizer, put tomato on top. The back one, the little one, I want to use fertilizer. I want to see which is which is better. So far, the two with the eggs are doing better than the fertilizer. So, just an experiment. These are onions again. And and because I, I always dig out my ditches, eh? Instead of wasting that spout, I put onions in the ditches. If you look down the row, all in the ditch. So in here, spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash, flowers, spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash, same spaghetti squash, and then tomato, rows of tomatoes, which only with, only with, um, with, with uh, manure on all of them. Manure I put down three years ago. So it's just manure and chips and uh, in topsoil. But if you look at some of them are doing so well. When I put them in, they, they were like, like probably four inches. I would say they, this... they were the size of this one here. They were all that size when I put them in. Just observing so far, and this will be fun to watch over the season, is that I'm seeing no difference between these and the fertilized ones, actually. No. And I think it's because. Um, the soil has been built so much in this That's what I think garden myself. bed. And there's plenty of fertility in the garden bed with the manure and the chips. I, I, I think you're right because because I put the manure in here three, four years ago, it's 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 just beautiful now. And then if you look over here, I have snap peas climbing up that there wall. If you want to walk over, you can take a picture. Uh, I actually thought they were going to die. But they are flourishing right now. They're doing really well. They're climbing up the wall like they're supposed to. <laughs> so what about these herbs here? These herbs we here, we got, we got onion herbs, garlic herbs, mint, and sage. What's, what, these, are, these are onion herbs here. Chives, onion chives right here. This is mint, sage. Lots of mint though. Look at all the mint in there. It's all mint. If, if you pull that off, smell that. It's really nice. Yes. And then you got the onions. All in the row. I, I do the onions. Why waste the space? If, if I'm not going to put something there, the big fella is. So I haven't brought up about weeds. And what do we got here? A weed. Right here, the weed. So I pull it out. The only problem I have here is growing grass. Uh, I might have spent this spring maybe a half hour. I've had maybe seven, eight weeds inside my garden. That's it. Seven, eight weeds. This is supposed to be a kind of a, a berry patch. It's supposed to be blueberries and uh, and 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 cherry bushes the blueberries are struggling so i done the same thing that i talked about over there i got the blueberry and i mounded it up 
up top and we're gonna see what happens because the blueberries are actually dying so we're gonna see and this is an apple tree my son-in-law and my daughter bought me for my birthday four years ago and it had no apples since but I pruned it and there's my first apple right there right there and there's some here yeah first ones this year I pruned it last year and now she's got apples she's growing nice and my son-in-law planted this so he done a pretty good job crimson crisp and the one down there is golden delicious so lots of different varieties as well there's the crab apple trees in the back neighbors have apple trees also so you really want to try to get a whole bunch of different varieties so that you know like we said before the blooming time is going to match up and line up and give you some fruit so same thing with the blueberries i mounted it all up we're going to see i mounted this one this one looked like it was dying too but now I, I see some green foliage coming so maybe and i got onions through there onions through there now reddening of leaves on blueberries is an Bad. indicator of um it's a soil pH indicator. Yeah. So it's an indicator that the plant can't get iron. Yeah. So there's a cation exchange that happens uh, that gets blocked at high pH specifically for iron. So You're if really you, struggling. yeah, if you see this in a pot, then you can amend with azalea fertilizer or blueberry fertilizer. Yeah. That'll drop the pH down. If you're doing it in a garden like this, you're not going to be able to change the pH of your whole entire garden. That's like trying to, you know, change the pH of the ocean by, you know, messing around with it. So a little bit of reddening of leaves. It's not the end of the world for the blueberries. You're just going to have to kind of deal with it. Yeah. The response to that might be to dig them up and put them in pots and then control the soil inside the pot. So I compost a lot. And when you compost, I, I thought I want to screen it all. And I was over at my daughter's house. She gave me the idea that she built a couple of screens for it to do something different. So I went and got a piece of screen, which my daughter gave me, and then I got the wood. And I'm not handy, believe me. I'm no carpenter. But it looked pretty simple. So I built this. Big enough to fit the wheelbarrow. Put the compost on top, screen it down, and it comes really nice and fine. You can use it for anything. So this is going to work perfect. It fits the wheelbarrow, throw it on, fills the wheelbarrow. You wheel it any way you want to go. And then the stuff that you have left over on the top of the screen. Back into the compost. Stick it in the compost again. Yep. Back into the compost. And then she'll break down even more. Edging again. More onions. But then when you look here, I switched it up. I put I put carrots. Put all carrots in here. And they're coming up. I didn't think they were going to grow, but they're coming up. So the carrots come right across. Right down and across. So when I seen them come up. I figured, what the hell? I might as well fill this spot in. So I put more carrots here. So, so how I do the carrots? A lot of people just plant them in. But what I do is I go get the spade. I dig a trench this deep. Down. Open it up. I don't break the dirt. I just open it up. Then I fill it back in lightly. And put the carrot seeds on top. So that opens the ground for the carrot to grow. It doesn't have to fight anymore. The force of the ground's not, not caught, where you end up with stubby carrots. These will be long carrots. If they grow, they'll be good. So that, I, I know a lot of people, they, they, uh, they just plant, right? If you open it up and give it uh, list resistance, the carrots will grow nice. I started a sweet potato here for sweet potato slips. I've already had six of them. I planted four. I've got two up top and this is going to be my last one. I'm going to put that into a bucket too. I've never done sweet potato slip before so this is new. <laughs> I've never done it before but this is this is the result of some. I've already planted some. I put them in water and then they root. And these both turn into sweet potatoes. This is stuff that I've had trouble with the garden this year, so I've, I've got extra stuff. If something dies, I, I can re, re, replant it. So I, I, I just keep this here just in case something dies. <laughs> thanks for watching, and thanks for visiting Poppy's Garden.